Yeah, so it's all good, though. We do appreciate that so much, man. Isn't that awesome? Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you so much for this moment in time that you are preordained. That, Father, we would assemble ourselves around your word. Your word is the preeminence in our lives, Father. We can do nothing without you, but we can do all things with you. We thank you, Father, you are our source, and that in you we live and we move and have every part of our being. We thank you as your word goes forth, unhindered, unchecked by any satanic force, that it will accomplish that which you intend and purpose it to do. And we alone will give you all the praise and all the glory and all the adoration due unto your name. For it's in Jesus Christ's name that we pray. And all in agreement, say amen. amen. Of course, we've been doing a teaching on, I meant to ask our visitor, uh, was that, uh, who, who told you about us? Was that Renee? Who? Your granddaughter. Okay, praise God, man. That's your granddaughter? That's your great granddaughter. Girl, you ain't old enough to have no, grand, no granddaughter. It's all good. That's all good. It's all good. That's good, man. And I'm just so excited about this lesson because we're, we're teaching and talking about he who is Holy Spirit. And I just believe that if we're going to be victorious in our lives, we're going to have to rely on the helper that God has sent our way. Amen. Too many of us have pushed him aside and we do it the way that we want to do it. But God is calling for us to use the help that he's made available to us. Somebody say help is on the way. Well, I should rephrase that, say help is, here. help is here, because he's not on the way, he's already here. And so once we recognize and understand that, that if we allow him, how many born again believers I have in here? If you're born again and Holy Spirit's on the inside of you, he's going to bring all these characteristic traits that we want to talk about today. I opened it up last week. I didn't get to, well, the week before and, and last week. But I really want to dig down into it a little deeper because I believe that if we will just allow Holy Spirit to rest, rule, and reign in our lives and in our heart, we'll start seeing the fruit that God has expected out of us. Do I got a witness in here? I want us to run over to Genesis chapter 9 uh, because I wanted to start there uh, how, be it, how we have um, gotten the name of this ministry and how befitting it is that we're talking about Holy Spirit and I want to dig up dig in the fruit of Holy Spirit and so when we recognize and realize everything about Holy Spirit is producing or is productive and he wants God wants us to produce fruit somebody say fruit See, it's foolish for us to come here just to come here. And if we don't come here to gain or glean or get information that will help our lives be transformed, we've wasted our time. Now, we understand that Ecclesiastes tells us we come in to do what? We come here to do what? That's why I don't want you to come and try to commit it to your memory. I need you to write it down. Because I believe, uh, where's uh, Cynthia? Yeah, the, the students they uh, retain a lot of the information as they're writing it down, right? A lot of times you can retain your information if you take notes. I know you got a sharp memory, but I'm going to tell you in this house, Holy Spirit will speak something to you. He may not want you to put everything on paper, but there's something that's going to be specifically geared towards you. Amen. Not your neighbor, not your spouse, not no you. June bugs should not have been here. You here. He has you here because he wants to produce fruit in your life so that when June bugs see your life, he'll want, he'll want the life that you have. Amen. As long as we're producing good fruit. Because all fruit ain't good. I said all fruit ain't good. Amen. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Amen. All fruit ain't good. Fruit ain't good. Amen. Now, I don't know how Holy Spirit going to have me move because I was all over the place with this lesson and just taking some more notes and digging a little bit deeper. But I just believe he's going to lead me right where we need to be. And you, I'm going to find you somewhere. I mean, I'm finding me because a lot of times we think we have arrived, but we have not arrived. 
Come on now. I don't care if you've been in this thing for 30 years. There's more that God wants to produce in and through our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody say it's more. more. Somebody say it's more. it's more. Come on, say it with confidence. There's more. God wants more out of our lives, and we got to recognize and understand that. And so, how be it, the name of the ministry is Fruitful Living Christian Center. Fruitful Living. I just believe if we would demonstrate the fruit that we read about, you don't necessarily have to tell anybody. They're going to look at the tree that's producing the fruit. And if you and I will produce this word in our lives, our life will be a witness to people. I ain't got to run up to them and give them a track. My life is the track. No, no, I'll say it again. My life is the track. Okay, let me get over here and see if we can respond. Because y'all mumbled a little bit over here. I said my life is a track. So when people see my life, they ought to see the Christ in my life. They ought to read the Bible through my life. Amen. You ain't got to always pull your Bible out and put it in somebody's face. Be the Bible. Amen. And today, you know, young people, they just want people to be real. And too many of us have lived a life of phoniness. And so now they reject anything that you bring to them because you're phony. You're a fake. You're a fraud. But when you produce the right fruit, can't nobody deny that you've been with Jesus. Shout me down when I'm teaching pretty good. I know I'm going to hit you somewhere. And I'm telling you, I hit myself. No, because I, I don't want to be in this thing and not producing. I was telling my wife this morning, I said, since you've been with me, you know that I am a visionary. God has made me a visionary. I, it, once once, once uh, we've finished one thing, we into the next thing. Amen. And not into the next thing just to be in the next thing because I understand that God has a path that he's leading us on and he wants us as a whole local body to produce. Amen. And so whatever he's expecting in his house, you best believe he's expecting it in your house. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so the scripture here says, and as for you, this is our foundation of scripture. And as for you, be, somebody say be. be. Okay. Be fruitful. Be. Don't act like it. Be. Okay. Just like in the book of Acts, he says, and you will be my witnesses. Not go in witness, be it. So if you're going to witness, be what you're witnessing about. Don't try to be something that you're not. Come on now. So God is challenging us, each and every one of us, to come up higher in this fruit category. We must produce fruit. And he says, be fruitful. And multiply and bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. Now, in the scripture context, he's talking about producing, reproducing, as in people. But the principle is fruitfulness, being fruitful. So, if he wants you to be fruitful even in reproduction, so that'll help you all when you talk about reproduction rights, he's telling us to be fruitful, okay? I'm going somewhere, Galatians chapter 5. Y'all, we already been there, but we're going some more because I'm building my case. And I'm going to show us that God is expecting more out of our lives. It's not like you've already arrived. I'm going to prove to you that we have not arrived because somebody can tick you off at any given day and you ain't thinking about no fruit. I know, I know the Lord want me to be fruitful, but you say that one more time. I'm going to give you. Not y'all mature ones. I know y'all mature ones, but for those of us that are still growing, we need all the help we can get. 
Do you know Holy Spirit, when he came into your life and he abides on the inside of you, do you realize he brought all that with him? So you can't tell me you can't be. I said, you can't tell me you can't be. Why? Because you said you have Holy Spirit on the inside of you. And Holy Spirit, okay, let's look at this thing. Uh, should I go right there? No, let's go down to 22 and then I'll go back up to 16. Because I, wanna, I don't want to hit you with all that stuff just right now, right off the bat. Let me show you what's on the inside of you. But I want to see it. I'm going to read it in this translation, but I'm going to read it in another translation because I believe this translation that I think I have, um, it gives me a clearer picture. And I need us to be very clear on this. Amen? We live in a world that nobody, everybody mean. I mean mean. I'm going to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we just mean. Oh, y'all pray for Brother Ken, too, because Brother Ken was in an accident last Tuesday. He showed me the pictures of the car. He was on 95, and somebody sideswiped him, and he flipped the car, he said, three times, and then it landed up on his wheels. And he walked away. Yeah. They looking at him, don't know how he came up out of that. I thought he didn't have any uh, cuts, but you said he told me he had one cut over his head and uh, he was a little sore, but he said he's doing very well. So they had angels, you're right. It just goes to show you don't know what your day going to be like when you roll up. So you got to act like this is your last time to going to be in the house. Are you listening to me? Y'all like my Joe Osteen thing? I got it flowing, don't I? <laughs> Y'all hold on. I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to get a little rough. It get a little turbulent. Amen. Y'all know I prayed for a few people uh, a couple of weeks ago, and they were believing God for some houses. Well, Pastor Charles has signed his contract uh, uh, on a house. Yeah. And, huh, one of many, yeah, one of many, because he said be fruitful. Amen. I believe what's on this house and what's on your man of God should be on you. Amen. Um, let's read. But, 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 but I lost this one. Something going over here. Y'all getting that back? All right. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Now, I'm going to read it in another translation because it really uh, amplifies what the fruit is. And the fruit is love, but it's manifested in so many different ways. Okay, you follow me? So I'm going to read it in this translation, but I'm going to give you another translation. Y'all tracking? I was telling somebody yesterday at the wedding, the wedding coordinator, I was telling, giving instruction on how I was going to officiate. And then I, oh, oh y'all y'all don't know nothing about this. Don't worry about it. Let me find an army person where you at. You, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I turned around and said, hey, you tracking? She said, I'm tracking. I said, you know what that means? She said, yeah, I know what it means. Now, see, the Air Force boy, I got to remind them what tracking means. CQ, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, see, if I told CQ tracking, he knows exactly what I'm talking about. But them boys in the Air Force, you got to help them out. Chair force? Chair force. Chair force, see. Are you an army dude? Yes. Oh, sookie, sookie now. I didn't say that, Mike. He said that. The visitor said that. Chair force. I might have to use that, and I gave him the first one. Now it's on me. I get to use that. Chair force. <laughs> Watch the fruit, right? Watch that fruit. <laughs> See that? I touched it. No, we're in the right lesson at the right time, right? <laughs> but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Come on. 
gentleness. Y'all read with me. Self-control against such. Can you give that to me in the TPT translation? The Passion translation. Same scripture verse. I need 22. I need 22. Hey, hey, can you get it? Okay. I didn't know if you was chair force or what. I'm just a... Y'all know I had to throw that out there, boy. That's a new one, boy. I'm going to use that. That's mine. <laughs> mine, boy. That's all mine. Check this out. But the fruit produced by the what? Holy Spirit. The fruit produced by what? The Holy Spirit. Mm. So if Holy Spirit's on the inside of us, there should be some of these characteristic traits coming out of us. You can't be mean and say Holy Spirit on the inside of you. You cussing and fussing. Don't shout me down. I'm teaching good. I'm pausing a little bit so I can let certain things sink in. Because, listen, we can't keep playing games. I heard that song. Games people play. Night all day. They... You don't know that one, do you? You know that one, Mike? You know that? I know. I just probably remember the name of the group. I know it. Okay. Well, come on back. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. <laughs> hey, look, y'all got to have fun, man. You got to have fun. I just, I'm, you know, I'm just flowing that. I joy, joy. Joy, you know what I'm saying? But the fruit produced, fruit produced by the Holy Spirit. Produced. Can you give me a definition of produced up there? You got to do two things at one time. Produced by the Holy Spirit within you is divine love. Okay, don't go there yet. Let me read this. Check this out. But the fruit produced by, Holy, by the Holy Spirit within you, where is he at? In you and I, is divine love. That is the fruit, love, right? The answer that could be Jesus. I couldn't resist that, all right? Couldn't resist that. <laughs> you know, so they don't feel so embarrassed to be trying to turn the friend off. So, you know, just make a joke about it so they'd be okay. It's okay. Holy Spirit within you is divine love. Check this out. In all its varied expressions. So, Holy Spirit love is expressed in these ways. Can we go into it now? So if you have Holy Spirit on the inside of you, you have love on the inside of you. So you and I have the capacity to express these fruit, uh, this fruit of love expressed in these ways out of our lives. Are you listening to me? So you can't tell me, you know, well, I can't, you know, I can't. No, you can. If Holy Spirit is in. It's just like you working on in faith. You, you trying to work on your faith. You are building your faith up. It's like, you know, I'm doing push-ups now. I know y'all, y'all, y'all seen it, right? Y'all, y'all seen, I'm, you know, y'all see my guns? Y'all better act like y'all, so y'all see <laughs> for, for this illustration, y'all say, yeah, Bishop, I see him. <laughs> they ain't going to agree with me. So they said, look, you told us about, you know, fruit of spirit, so we ain't going to lie. I got a scripture. I'm going there today. I'm going there about that line, too. Y'all hold on. Fasten your seatbelts. So just let me spend a little time here so you'll be smiling. Because when I go over to where Paul was talking about some other stuff, you probably won't smile because you're going to find yourself there. Not that you don't have Holy Spirit on the inside. Maybe we have not been developing these manifestations or these expressions the way that we need to manifest them. And I'm guilty. And I want to express what God wants me to express. Why? Because I'm not thinking about me. I'm thinking about the lives that I'm going to encounter when I'm out there. Amen. See, we can do it in here. 
But when you're faced against some folks that ain't going to look like or act like the folks that you come and you worship with, how are you and I going to respond? Some of y'all in the public sector, you know, there's some people that just can be just mean and rude. They don't care about no God, don't care about no Jesus. Oh, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? But that shouldn't, that shouldn't change how we're going to respond. Because I can't respond the way that they would. Now, I know some people say, well, you got to check some. Yeah, it's checked, but you better, you better check them in a, a loving way. Because sometimes when you check, you come out of check out of anger that can hurt a person that would never let, uh, give them an opportunity. They would want to meet the Jesus that you want to tell them about. No, God has a way how you can put a person in check where you ain't got to be checking the way you think you need to check. And that's according to your flesh. Come on, you understand what I'm saying? You don't think I want to? Somebody talked to me like, so what? You talking to me? No, but I, I, a check, Holy Spirit, no. Don't say that. Don't say that. My wife and I was having a conversation. Um, she says, you, you don't like confrontation. It's not that I don't like confrontation. I know me. So if you come off of me a certain way, I got I to gotta be still. Because I know in, it, sometimes some rage can come out. Because God's still working on me. And I don't want you to experience that little part of me that's trying to die. Because that part of me that's trying to die could kill my witness. Amen. You don't think I want to come at you? Do I got a witness in here? You slap me, I want to slap you right back. No, I'm telling you. I, I don't have what some of y'all got. Hey, it's okay. Yeah, it's all love. Uh, no, I'll be like, okay. Because I know I got to check that. I got to check me. Because I know me. Jesus checked himself. Wasn't that he couldn't call a legion of angels down to knock you off your horse. But he was so humble and meek that he could, he could submit. Okay, y'all see, I didn't got back to where I know we get to. Let me go back to my Joel thing. You understand what I'm saying? So I know you want to tell a person a piece of your mind, but you better listen to the Holy Spirit because it may not be the time for you to give your mind. He don't want you to give your peace. He wants you to walk in perfect peace. Why? Because your mind is stayed on him. Hallelujah. No, I, was just, I, just seen, I just seen Fred, man, Sanford and Son. <laughs> y'all know, y'all remember, how many of y'all remember Fred Sanford, Sanford? Yeah, some of y'all, y'all like, you doing all that, and God wants you to put your guns down. See, 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 I'm getting to a place, y'all know I'm getting one more year older, and I just want peace in my life. I, I ain't got time for all that foolishness, man. I, I ain't got time for that. I just want peace. So if I got to walk away, I'm going to walk away from your foolish self. You going to let them do that? I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to see you. I'm telling you, I'm training myself because, you know, my battlefield is when I'm in my whip. Whip, car for that, for those of you who don't know what a whip is. And they pull in my lane. And you know you're supposed to be in the right lane. Not in the left lane. Because everybody doing 65 in the left lane. You can't get in the left lane and do 50. Now I know me right then. I'm like, oh, Lord. <laughs> How many of y'all here? How many of y'all with me? Oh, Lord have mercy. You see, you see what I'm saying? I ain't like y'all. Y'all just be driving. Yay. Isn't it a great day? Oh, everything's lovely. No, I'm going somewhere to get. 
Somebody say he's working on me. No, he's working on me. I know in that area he's working on me, Winston. So when you get your license, don't you get in the left lane. <laughs> I used to love 95, man. I used to love 95 because all goals are 95. And now I don't even like 95. I'm training myself to drive on country roads. Country roads, take me home. Oh, y'all, come on back, come on back, come on back. Because I know when I'm driving on that, it, it, you know, I got to take my time. So I'm working on me. I, I want fruit, man. No, I want fruit. I, I want fruit in my life. When, 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 when Pastor D get on my nerves, y'all don't tell her now. Don't tell her. When she get on my nerves, I can't say the last one because I got many of them. Uh, we, 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 we fuss at each other. We see who going to get louder. Is easy. She get loud, I'll get louder. But that's just the way how we flow. And at the end of the day, we got each other's back. That's the way it should be, not only in your house, but in God's house. Amen. I, I know you, you, you ain't going to like me sometimes. I ain't going to like you. But at the end of the day, we're going to be all right. Amen. Why? Because what's on the inside of us is going to draw us back. Because the Holy Spirit wants unity. You know, Holy Spirit, anything, anytime there's a division, you know it ain't God. So, so that's, that's an easy thing to figure out because God don't send Holy Spirit to God to, 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 to divide his house. Are you listening to me? Can I just get back to these expressions? I'm just taking my time, though. I got my time on there. Y'all cheated at me some time. Y'all take some of my time because that clock sure is rolling. I'm going to have that dial stand still. Love in all his varied expressions. Very expressions. Somebody say expressions. expressions. Okay, so now if I'm operating in the love of God, I'm going to be expressing that love through these different expressions. Or can I say manifestations? Okay? Look at this. Joy that overflows. Just right there. I can stop right there because we're not walking in overflowing joy. You've been trained sometimes up. Sometimes down. Sometimes always level to the ground. Well, no, we should be always on top. No, I don't read that in the Bible. I understand we're going to have some afflictions. Because the Bible says many are the affliction of the righteous. But he, I'm not pausing there. But the Lord delivers us out of them all. So listen, I'm not just because I'm going through a little something, it's not the end of the day. It's not the end of the story. Amen. I'm just going through for a moment. But while I'm going through, I'm relying on the Holy Spirit on the inside of me to let that joy come up out of me. Y'all know y'all singing, this joy I have, the world didn't give it, the world can't take it away. Now you sing that, but you don't really believe it. Come on, you, you, you got to believe that if joy on the inside, and he don't stop here. He says, joy that overflows. See, everyone, when you feel like you want to get down, you got to remind yourself. Remind yourself. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. I know I'm going through something. But God, you promised in your word that I'll have this joy. I have it on the inside of me. You ain't got it? You, good. you grab the scriptures all in the Bible that talks about joy, and you start meditating on them day and night. So that when you get in a predicament where you don't sense any joy, that word will come back to your remembrance, and you say, oh. 
See, that's why Paul was telling Timothy to study to show yourself approved. You ain't got to study to prove nothing to me. You got to study to let your own self know what's on the inside of you. What did I tell you? I said to you, and when uh, my late wife passed away, and I could have just got like down, but the Lord was showing me a scripture. He showed me, he says, now, if you fall into pieces in the day of adversity, there wasn't much to you anyway. So that lets me know, wait a minute. Oh, they, although that's a, that was a situation, I can still rejoice because I understood where she was going to spend her eternity. So when others think you should fall apart and you don't fall apart, they say, mm, they ain't sensitive. No, I just realized who's on the inside of me. I might have been not, you might have hit me, but the weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. I don't care what Donnie say. We fall down, but we get up. I ain't even going to get down. I'm just going to, you going to. Hunt your neighbor and say, neighbor, that boy sure is talking, ain't he? Peace that subdues. Peace that subdues. Peace that overtakes you. That, that grabs a hold of you. That, that's what I was experiencing. No, I'm not going to fall to pieces. Why? Because I got the peace of God. It's already on the inside of me, so I call it up out of me. When, when Joshua said, in our law, we will meditate day and night. The word meditate means to ponder. Ponder means to chew it like a cow chews the cud. A cow will eat and you will see him setting down, but he's still chewing. Why? He's regurgitating everything out of his belly and he's chewing it right back. Just like you and I got to get that word on the inside of us. So when we're going through something that may not be favorable, we can pull it back out of us and chew on it. Are you listening to me? That peace that subdues, I call peace out of me. Patience that endure. Patience. See, 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 yeah. See, ooh, Jesus. Uh, I need that patience. And I know when I get in my car, that patience is going to be tried. I am getting so much better. I'm See, for me to talk about it, I'm hearing it and knowing that I got to allow the Spirit of God to help me to deal with it. So whatever area that you see me hitting on, you fall short in, write that down so you can have the helper that you have on the inside of you to help you when you get in those predicaments. Come on, we ain't, you don't want to just come here. The worship was fine. That was great. That's what we just setting your heart up, getting you ready for it. Now the word is coming to sow it into your heart so that when you go out of here, don't let the devil steal it. Because you're going to need it when you leave here. How many of y'all got to go to work tomorrow? How many of y'all going to know y'all going to meet, uh, you know, somebody that, oh, Lord, I had a nice day at service yesterday, and the dinner was fine. The Ravens won, and now I got to deal with Shaniqua. <laughs> or Karen. <laughs> or Bobo, or whoever it might be. Y'all know what I'm telling you the truth. You know what I'm saying? And they come, here come, they are, here come, I'm going to spoil my joy. Can't nobody spoil your joy. You allow them. You can say, uh-uh, not today. And you ain't got to get on my nerves. Not today, devil. No, devil. You ain't got to do all that. You ain't got to do that. You, can just, you hear what I'm saying, Winston? Sometimes we do that just to be seen. You ain't got to go through all that. Just know in your, in your knowing, oh, no, not today, devil. Mm -mm, no, ain't coming. And then you're going to purpose in your heart, here she comes. Here she comes. You can say, you're going you, to react first. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Because, see, if you react first, you can set the tone. Before she even opened her mouth, hey, girl, how you doing today? Girl, I like what you got on. That's just, okay, you might not like what you got on. So let's don't go there. 
but find something good about the person that you can recognize that now you shifted the whole thing. Why? Because Holy Spirit on the inside of you is leading and guiding you. You might not like her dress. You might not like her pants. Girl, I love them earrings. Where you get them at? Oh, these old things. Oh, girl, they pretty. Now you've set the tone. Amen. Instead of you saying, oh, here she come. I'm just waiting for her to say something. No, you jump. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Patience that endure. Kindness. Woo, I just spoke on that. Kindness in action. Do something. Do, 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 just be kind. Be, be, even when you, when you get ready to leave here, just be kind to someone. Can I help you to your car? Just start working on it. Start practicing. You are developing it. Amen. Start developing it. Amen. Practice wherever, wherever you're at. You, are you going to miss it? Yes, you're going to miss it sometime. But Holy Spirit going to let you know you just missed it. And you like me, I always say, Holy Spirit, give me another shot. I missed this one. Give me another opportunity. And you can best believe it's coming. You, you move out of that and miss one, because, you know, sin is just missing the mark. And so if you miss the mark in that one, you're going to get another test. It's coming back your way. You're going to be tried again. Amen. And don't look at it like, like, you know, no, okay, God, I know you want some fruit. So we're going to have some fruit come out. So I don't care how much, okay. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus. Don't y'all, y'all look straight ahead. All y'all married folks, just look straight ahead. Don't get in the car and one of y'all say something, just pop off and say something. Don't even... <laughs> Don't go back. You ain't hear what Bishop said. <laughs> no, don't respond that way. You hit him with this kindness thing. Yeah, 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 baby. Yeah, yeah I'm glad you remind me of that. Yeah, I, I need to check that. Don't get in there. Don't, don't, did, did, you, did you hear what he said? <laughs> don't be asking about me. You, did you hear what he said? Come on, how many of y'all be like that sometimes? They're going to tell the truth. Shame the devil. And y'all going to hear my voice in the car. Oh, I just heard Bishop. <laughs> you ain't hear Bishop. You heard Holy Spirit in my voice. I got Bible proof for that. See, see Eli, um, he's there, and Samuel hears the voice of God. He runs to Eli. Why run to Eli? Because, see, Eli, he's been speaking into Samuel's life, but he's speaking in as the priest, and the priest should be representing God. And when he hears his priest, he's hearing God. Amen. Okay, so you got to clear that up because some people say, well, you think he God? No, it is just God's order that he will put people in your life to speak into your life that hears directly from him. Amen. So all them renegade people on Facebook, you better shut them folks down. Kindness in action, a life full of virtue, power. Come on. Faith that prevails, gentleness of heart, and strength of spirit. Never set the law above these qualities, for they are meant to be limitless. There's no cap to them. Limitless. We should be living in this type of production all of our life without limit. Now, the only one we want to limit, let's go up to 16. I think I'd give y'all that part first. So you can see how we can fall short just in the fruit part. Let's start looking at what our flesh will produce. And if you, look, if, if you, see, that's why I said, I ain't even got to talk. If I could just get you to allow the fruit of the spirit operating in your life, I ain't got to worry about this that I'm getting ready to show you. I, I'm not, you know, I'm just trying to help you out. Because when we don't operate the way the Spirit of God wants us to operate, we shortchange ourselves. Amen. Amen. 
You're going to have pain, misery, and agony because you want to operate as your flesh. I ain't going to get to John where I want to get to John at because I can just feel it's, I can feel it's light in the room, right? It ain't too heavy, is it? <laughs> Let me emphasize uh, uh, this. As you yield to the dynamic life and power of the Holy Spirit, look at this. You will abandon, what did you say? Abandon. The cravings of your self-life. So now, what I just said, if you and I would just yield hold to the Holy Spirit that's on the inside, all this other stuff I ain't got to worry about. It's going to try to crop his head up because you know that, oh, you always wants to present itself. The old you wants to remind you, hey, you remember like what it was, you know how we was. Now, you know how, you know, back in the day, you and I, we was like. Because, you know, the devil always want to remind you of your past. He is never concerned with your future because if he can keep you in your past, you'll never get into your future. Next verse. Y'all all right? They tell him I got 20 minutes to do something. Lord, have mercy. When your self-life craves the things that offend the Holy Spirit, isn't it something? All I got to do is read the scriptures. I ain't got to extra jeep this at all. Just put it out there. You, you can't, I, I ain't got to explain it. It's already explained. Now you can throw rocks at me all you want. But it's not really me you're throwing rocks at because it's God speaking through me through these scriptures to give to us so that we can live a fruitful life. I told y'all for the rest of my life, I'm on the other side of fitty. Not fitty, said fitty. And my other side going to be better than my previous side. I'm a lot smarter. I'm a lot wiser. I shouldn't be a 50 or 60-year-old fool. Especially if you're a believer and you got Holy Spirit on the inside of you and you're still doing some foolish things. It's like you're 50 and you're still riding a bike making the motorcycle sound. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all single ladies, y'all hear that dude coming down there with that bicycle? He ain't the one. Because y'all going to be riding them bikes with two of y'all in that pedal. And it get cold out there in the winter time. But I love him, Bishop. Well, go ahead. When I see y'all going to ride bike, doo -doo. Hey. I figure I'd throw that one in there. That's freebie. When your self-life craves the things that offend the Holy Spirit, you hinder him from living free within you. Come on, y'all got that? Yes. See, because you're trying to figure out why things ain't working in your life. You are hindering Holy Spirit from working in your life. It has nothing to do with the preacher. You can blame the preacher. You can blame your, blame, blame your mama. You can blame your kids. No, you got to put the onus on you. You got to stop name blaming, man. Because at the end of the day, it's between you and God. Y'all all right? Because it just seems like you can just hear a penny drop. I, I know I'm in the vein. No, I know I'm where I'm supposed to be at. No, I know. Because God wants more fruit. Before, we waiting on the bus to go to heaven and God says, I ain't coming yet because there's much work for us to do and it's going to start in your life and my life. <laughs> Y'all trying to call him up on the main line. He ain't even going to answer the phone call because he already gave you what he wants you to have and all you got to do is pick up his book. Those of y'all don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. And the Holy Spirit, intense cravings hinder your self-life. Look at this. Holy Spirit's intense cravings. Holy Spirit wants it more than you and I. 
And if we'll just allow Holy Spirit to do what he's been designed and created to do, when Jesus says, I'm leaving, but I'm going to give you some help, if we just allow him to do what he's supposed to do. And let him intensify himself in our lives. Let him grow in our lives. Let him be manifested in our lives. So you ain't got to say, but you know, because every Sunday somebody got an issue, and it could be the same person. Well, why you got the same issue when you got help? He should be coming, and we should be sharing our testimonies of how God has gotten you out of whatever issue it was. Why? Because you listened to the Holy Spirit, and he led you right through the crisis. Because some people just love to stay in those crises because they want sympathy. And look at your name saying, he ain't talking about you. He just talking about me. He ain't talking about you. Don't worry about it. You good. Y'all with me? Yeah. I ain't got but two scriptures today, man. That's what's called. I got so much. Oh, you're just like, oh, Lord. And the Holy Spirit intense cravings hinder yourself, hinders your self-life from dominating you. Okay. What in your life right now? Don't say it out loud. Just write it down. No, 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 write it down. See, you, you, AA tell you, if you confess it, just, that's what the scripture tell you too, confess it. Go ahead and write it down. You know, write it down. Now, you began something that you can allow Holy Spirit to help you get through that. But if you never recognize where you, where art thou? Where art thou? Do you know where you're at? I'm not talking about your physical presence right now. I'm talking about your state of your life. Where are you? When you can recognize and realize, man, I'm, yeah, I'm not where I'm supposed to be. And I'm not talking about physical. I'm talking about these characteristic traits. When I recognize I'm short on love, I'm short on this, this kindness and this joy thing. Okay, recognize it. Write it down. God, okay, now I need you to work with me. I don't want my self-cravings to supersede. That in which Holy Spirit would have. Come on now. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Is this blessing you? I mean, do you see yourself somewhere coming now? I don't want to be the only one being exposed. Because you supercharged Christians. So then, the two, what two? Holy Spirit and your self-craving life. Okay? Incompa incompatible and conflicting forces within you are your self-life of the flesh and the new creation life of the Spirit. Always, that's Holy Spirit, capitalized. So, see, see, you got to understand. The Holy Spirit is never going to have you doing something contrary to God's word. I tell you this all the time. I use this as an example because this is really, it just it hits, make impact. You know anything that's contrary to the word of God and you doing it, you know it ain't Holy Spirit. We had a Holy Spirit letting me to slap Joe. Now, I know you're laughing. But you'd be surprised what folks be saying, and they call themselves Christians. Amen. Like you got pastors beefing on Facebook. That ain't God. And that lets me know you could be in it 30 years, and you still need some help from Holy Spirit because you still jacked. Amen. If you know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. Just take my word for it. That's why I know where we at with this lesson is where we need to be. Because we got some growing up to do. Go over to Ephesians. Yeah, let me hit that. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. Now, y'all don't have it back there in your notes, so you're going to have to go to Ephesians and just trust me on this. Ephesians chapter 4. I don't know what, 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 what translation... Because I'm just, I'm just, okay. Just go to Ephesians chapter 4. Let's start at verse 17. 
Now, Ephesians chapter 4, uh, I'm going to start at 17, but go home and read the verses prior to that. Because you're talk, you'll see how God has placed in his house, he's given us the fivefold ministry gift gifts to mature us, to grow us up. That we will walk in this love that he talks about, till we all come to the unity of faith. Are you listening to me? Say amen if you hear me. So now I had to, I had, I, I just wanted to go ahead and give you a little, uh, 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 a little uh, precursor of what's happening so I can come on down because he was talking about, um, he gives us those so we, could, we, so we can mature, but then you're going to find out how we can see if we're in some different manifestations of our immaturity. And you'll see, come on now, that you, you, you know you got a lot of growing up if you still want to sleep around. Look how quiet he gets. <laughs> now I'm using that, but I'm coming because it's in the church. Y'all act like it ain't in the church. And we walk like it's nothing wrong with it. And if Holy Spirit is on the inside of you, would Jesus sleep around? So y'all yeah, wonder, I must be hitting somebody's because y'all are like, no. Can we just be raw? Let me be raw because I believe that we got to get this thing right. I'm tired of seeing people dying and going to hell because they don't believe in what we say we believe in. And they don't see any difference in our life. So why should they come over to this side? Because you're living fouler than what I'm living. Foul, okay, worse than what I'm living. And you want me to serve that God? Hello? Is it me you're looking for? <laughs> so with the wisdom given to me from the Lord, I say, you should not live like the unbelievers around you who walk in their empty delusions. Believers. Now, Paul is talking to, to uh, unbelievers. He's talking to the church. Okay. So I was thinking about this today and this lesson, and this lesson is not for unsaved folks. This lesson is not for unsaved folks. If you save, this lesson is for you. But we'll hit the unsaved before we roll out of here. Give them opportunity to get connected to the one who is able to keep them from falling. Are you listening to me? I got nine minutes, y'all. Y'all still, y'all good? We get ready to come down to the landing for today. So uh, I'm going to get ready. I, I should have told y'all fasten your seatbelts, but you keep your seatbelts fast until we land. <laughs> so with the wisdom given to you, given to me from the Lord, I say you should not live like the unbelievers around you who walk in their empty delusions. Mm, mm, mm. Give it to me. Give me this in the AMPT, uh, the Amplify Classic version. There you go. Let me stay right there. I'm going to close now. I got an eight-minute close. Yeah, we get y'all out of here before the Ravens thing. Man, that's, that can't be right. So this I say in Solomon testify in the name of the Lord as his presence that you must no longer live as the heathen, the Gentiles, doing their perversiveness. Now, y'all know it's all this kind of stuff going on in, in the world. You already see it. I ain't got to name it because it shouldn't be named among you, Paul said. Okay? <laughs> in the folly, vanity, and emptiness of their souls and the futility of their minds. Y'all remember Paul said in Romans chapter 1, he'll give them up to a reprobate mind? Not you, though, because you're supposed to have the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you. Now, you got to remember Paul is saying that. Paul has given them the example. His mind is like, just like Christ. So let your mind be like my mind that is like Christ's mind. Are you listening to me? Next verse. 
because I wanted to hit something. I'm good. I'm good. Their moral understanding is darkened, and their reasoning is be clouded. They are alienated, estranged, and self-banished from the life of God with no share in it, this is, because of the ignorance, the want of knowledge and perception, the willful blindness, willful blindness, meaning they want to be blind. You don't care. Don't tell me. I just want to. You know, when you made up your mind, you're going to do what you're going to do. Can't nobody talk you out of it. And sometimes that could be good, but sometimes that could be bad. That is deep-seated in them due to their, what? Hardness of heart. You know, a hard-headed person, you can't tell them nothing. You better change the oil in your car. I got this in my car. What you worry about my car for? You better change the oil. I'll change it when I feel like it. Okay. Two weeks later, where's your car? Oh, they said the engine gone. Car headed. No, okay. I said that about a car. But let's talk, talk about your life. You don't want to listen to Holy Spirit, and you're trying to figure out why you're in a mess. That deep-seated in them, due to their hardness of heart, to the insensitiveness of their moral nature. Come on. In their spiritual apathy, they have become callous and past feeling and reckless and have abandoned themselves a prey, meaning you, you ready for the wolves to eat you. Woo, Jesus. Man, this sure is quiet in here. Let me close the book. <laughs> to, come on. It's not, look, I'm talking about, we dealing with all of us. No, this ain't just for one person. This is for all of us. How do I know that? Because Paul said, let every man work out his own Soul salvation. You're going to have to work on you. To unbridled sensuality, eager and greedy to indulge in every form of impurity that their depraved desires may suggest and demand. You're going to do whatever you want to do. You know, when sin, sin, you start off in sin and sin just gets nastier and nastier. Now, that's the best way I can say it, you know, because you do one thing and then it'll lead to the next thing and it leads to another thing. And you get so far out there, you can't even believe how you are. It's like, like with drugs. I started off just drinking beer. Then, like, you know, smoke a little weed. Smoke a little weed, smoke a lot more weed. Didn't get enough weed, so let me get some coke. Didn't get enough coke, let me get some crack. And I knew I was going to graduate to the next thing until God arrested me. And that's a lie right there. That's a lie right there. He didn't arrest me. I chose to give it up. And I said, God, I'm tired. I don't want to live like this no more. And he was saying, son, I was just waiting on you. Because I can't do anything if you don't allow me to do it. Amen. Holy Spirit can't do anything in your life that you don't allow him to do it. Amen. And you want him to do it, and he's not going to do it. He says, I'm here to help you. Amen. In order to get help from a problem, you got to recognize you got a problem. Amen. Am I helping you? Don't lie now. If I ain't helping you, you stay at the class. <laughs> I'll do some one-on-one -on -one tutoring. And you ain't talking. I'm going to do the talking. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, to unbridled sensuality, eager and greedy to indulge in every form of impurity that their depraved desires may suggest and demand. Come on, next verse. But you did not so learn Christ, assuming that you have really heard him and been taught by him. Because, see, if you've been heard or you heard him and been taught by him, you ain't going to want to do this. 
That's why I, I'm now at this place where I'm not sure everybody that claim that they saved really saved. Because if you've been arrested by Holy Spirit, you've been, okay. Answer this question for me. If they arrest you, put handcuffs on you, take you to prison, did they arrest you? That's not a trick question. <laughs> it's not a trick question. You locked up. That means you don't have any privileges. You can't move when you want to move. You can't do what you want to do because you're under the beck and call of those who have arrested you. I'm talking good right now. If you and I have been arrested by Holy Spirit, we can't do what we want to do. Because why? He now has the preeminence in our lives. How do I know this? Because the Bible tells me that we were bought with a price. And the price that we were bought with, if we born again, is the blood of Jesus. So now because of the blood that has cleansed me and washed me, it does not give me the opportunity or it does not allow me or afford me the place in my life that I can do whatever I want to do. No, because I was bought with a price. I've been arrested. Assuming that you have really heard him and been taught by him as all truth is in Jesus, embodied and pers personified in him. Come on, next verse. I got to hurry up. Script yourselves of your former nature. What did it just say? What are you, you going to do? Kill that. I'm going to do what I want to do. No, 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 no. I got to do what Jesus is telling me to do. No, strip yourself. Take off the old you. Put on the new you. Amen. Just like when you were baptized, the old you went down. You come up anew. Come on, somebody. Strip yourself of your former nature. Put off and discard your old, unrenewed self, which characterized your previous manner of life. Yeah, 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 you know, I understand what this old church, was, the old church was saying. This is the best way they can explain it. Uh, you know, uh, uh, when I looked at my hands, my hands looked new. Yeah. When I looked at my feet, yeah. and they did. If you had corns before you got saved, yeah. if you ain't went to the doctor, you still got corns. Yeah. But I understood what they said because the old man is dead. I'm not doing what I used to do. Why? Because I'm a new creation, a new creature in Christ. So you don't need me to come and tell you to do the right thing. You automatically want to do the right thing because of who's on the inside of you. You'll never say stuff like, oh, the preacher's judging me. No, I'm not judging you. The word is convicting you. We substitute conviction with judging. But God says, no, I'm going to convict my church. I ain't talking about sinners. I ain't talking about those who ain't saved. I'm talking about those who call themselves being born again. Okay, when's my time? Okay, I'm done. Let me finish this up. Can I finish this up? I hate this. Strip yourselves of your former nature, put off and discard your old, unrenewed self, which characterized your previous manner of life and becomes corrupt through lust and desires that spring forth from delusions. Well, give me one more verse. <sighs> and be constantly, look, be constantly what? Renewed in the spirit of your mind. Meaning having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude. You and I are going to have to change the way that we think. If you know that you're flowing in a way that's contrary to the word of God, you're going to have to think differently. You're going to have to do something differently. Can, can, I, can I suggest to you one of the first things you and I need to do if we want to think differently? <laughs> Act like you participate. <laughs> We're going to have to get in the word, meditate on the word, and do the word. Because one thing, we read the word. I got a regimen of what I read every morning. I read something. But it's no good to me if I just read it and don't do it. 
I'm liking that to a man looking in his face in the mirror. See that I got stuff in my face and don't do nothing with that. How many of you get up in the morning and don't wash your face? Don't answer that. <laughs> Lord, don't answer that. Please don't answer that. It's just like you getting up in the morning. You ain't going to get up in the morning and know you got stuff in your face. And then go out, of the work, go out to work with this gunk in your eyes. You ain't going to do that. How, oh, good God Almighty. How you going to feel if you know that you got this? Oh, my God. Nobody told me I had this in my eyes. Why didn't they tell me I had this stuff in the eye, in my eyes? It's just like that. Holy Spirit's telling you, you got some stuff, some junk in your life. And I want to help you get rid of that junk so that you can see better. You can be better. You can do better. Come on, somebody. You hear what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, God wants some fruit. Amen. Somebody say, I'm a fruit bearer. Come on, somebody say, I'm a fruit bearer. I'm a fruit Come on, say it like you mean it. Say, I'm a fruit bearer. I'm a fruit bearer. God wants us to produce fruit. Every head bow, every eye closed. I can't assume everybody is born again in this place. Matter of fact, thank you, Holy Spirit. I will say that. I say that. So my appeal today is for those who have not been born again. That means you've never given your heart to Jesus. And so if you haven't given your heart to Jesus, then Holy Spirit is not within you. It starts with that relationship first. My wife and I was discussing today, and, and, and I was saying how... Uh, a person could come and be in the house of God, right? With your head bowed, just listening to what I'm saying. Um, um, and one person can be in the same family, and one might roll out of being under the cover, covering, covering, cover of God and connection of God, and the other one might roll out and do the same thing. And next thing you know, they ain't nowhere in church, nowhere to be found. And, and, and one of the things she and I was talking about this morning was it all gets, goes back to a personal relationship with God. See, I can't have my relationship based on my wife. She ain't here. No, my wife is working. Now, if she was at work and if I wouldn't on this platform, would I still come if she's not at, if she's at work and she's not here? No, because it's all about personal relationship. She has to have her own relationship with Christ, just like I got to have my relationship with Christ. So if something was to happen to her, okay, she's, she may be gone, but it doesn't stop my relationship with God. And so many of us are allowing our relationships to be hindered because we're basing it on others. But you got to walk this thing with God. Personally, intimately. Every head bow, every eye closed. You're in this place and you don't have a personal relationship with God. You've never I mean, came to God and confessed to him, God, I need you. Not because my wife, not because my husband. I need you. You trying to be better for your spouse, but you can't do it by yourself. You trying to be better for your children. You can't do it by yourself. You need some help. And he's here. And he's waiting on you. Yeah, I heard that. And for the other person or the persons, that one time in your life you had a real deep commitment on fire. Loving God. And you kind of like slip back a little bit. And this lesson really spoke to your heart. Because you're not producing the way that maybe you used to produce. Or you know that God wants you to produce. Well, I'm talking to you, sir. I'm talking to you, ma'am. And today, we're going to literally, by faith, come to the altar today. And allow the one who is able to help us, the one who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ask or think. Don't worry about your husband. Don't worry about your wife. Don't worry about your kids. It's you and God right now. Y'all having a moment right now. And that moment in this moment is setting you up for your next moment. 
And if you don't like the moment that you're in right now in your life and you want your next moment of life to be better, it's time to make a decision to say, okay, I'm going to give my heart to Jesus totally and fully. I'm going to surrender all to him. Now, if I'm talking to you, I need you to stand right where you're at and just come on up because all I want to do is pray with you and pray for you. Because I know there's many of us in the room that you kind of like kind of, I don't want to say you kind of backslidden, but, but you know you need Holy Spirit's help. And some of you are still fussing and cussing. I mean literally cussing. And God says, listen, I'm going to help you. I want to help you, but I need you to recognize you need help. I just need you to come on up. Let's pray together. I don't care. Don't worry about who's looking. Don't worry about what people think. That's the problem. We're worried about what somebody else thinks. But you need to get healed. You need to get fixed. You need to get delivered. And Holy Spirit is here to help you. And if I'm talking to you, come on up. Let's just pray. Let's pray together. Let's get this thing settled, man. Let's just rely on Holy Spirit. Let's rely on Holy Spirit. You're in here today. Come on, let me, let me just pray for you, pray with you. Hallelujah. Glory to the God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Well, give the Lord a hand, praise, says everybody's good. I'm going to find out how good you are. I'm going to find out. I might just purposely walk by you, don't say nothing. We'll see how it will come off and will come out your mouth. Bishop, what kind of bishop are you? You need some more work. You, 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 we need some work, man. No, we need some work. Amen? Say, Lord. Do it in me. Somebody say, Lord, do it in me. In Jesus' name. Come on, put those hands together and celebrate God. Hallelujah. All right, well, praise God. Stand all over the building. Don't forget the children got some goodies downstairs. And go and uh, bless them. You might not eat it, but sow a seed. Increase it. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you better be kind to me. Tell them, be gentle to me. And don't y'all go home fussing. And don't y'all be yelling at the TV when the Ravens play. I got to make sure I talk. I got to tell uh, Minister Meyer and Brother T, I make sure they're good to go. I'll text them later on, make sure everything's good. I don't want them to get a new flat screen. Huh? I said they're going to win? Okay, they're good. Y'all going to win. <laughs> Did I prophesy that? That's why Brother T smiling? Well, praise God. Lift your hands up to heaven. That's where your help comes from. Father, we thank you and we honor you. Thank you for your word on today. We thank you that our lives is producing the fruit that you require of us. Because we have Holy Spirit on the inside of us, he is producing and developing this fruit of love that is being expressed in so many different ways. And so, Father, just because we had an encounter with you on today, when we leave this place, we never leave your presence. Thank you, Father, ministering angels are encamped about us. Till we reach our destination, God, and find it even better. And when it was when we left, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. In Jesus' mighty name, one more shout as you go out the door. Come on, give him praise. Go in peace and